Welcome back to Morning Dose. Well, did you know that about 6 million people are currently living with heart failure right now in the U.S.? Well, Dr. Brooke Goldner is here to share with us some of the signs that we can look out for and how to deal with some of the cases of heart failure that people are currently dealing with. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. And this is a big issue, right? Because yeah. it's not just 6 million people who are suffering, way more than that, because their mm. families are suffering, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't just affect that person, but everyone who loves them. It's a really big issue. Yeah. And that's what I'm currently dealing with, with my family and my mother recently experiencing heart failure and not even seeing the signs that we could have helped prevent it. So first of all, tell us what is heart failure and what's the difference between heart failure and a heart attack? Absolutely. So heart failure is simply when the heart is just too weak to do its job. So Mm -hmm. its job is to pump blood to all of our vital organs and through our body. And when it gets too weak to do that job, we call that heart failure. Mm -hmm. Now, heart failure is caused by a lot of things. Most commonly, it's caused by coronary artery disease. So that's when the blood going into the heart is having trouble getting in because of blockages that are being caused by plaques in the arteries. So these sticky plaques form from eating saturated fats and things. Mm -hmm. And when blood can't get into the heart sufficiently, we call that a heart attack. So in a heart attack, some of the heart tissue actually dies, which can then lead to heart failure. Mm -hmm. And then other causes would be high blood pressure, which is actually the heart trying to push blood out of the heart into the body through those plaques. And and that causes the heart to get weaker as well. And then Mm -hmm. diabetes. And many Americans have all three, right? They've got diabetes, high blood pressure, and they've got coronary artery disease disease and that makes them at extreme high risk for heart failure. So if we're focusing on heart failure, what are some of the things that happen after heart failure? So if your heart can't pump sufficiently, mm-hmm. so one, the person's going to be very weak. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to have shortness of breath. They can have chest pain. They can also have a filling up of their body with fluid. The fluid is not mm-hmm. moving through efficiently. So you can see it fill up sometimes in the lungs where they can feel very short of breath. Other times you'll see it with a lot of fluid flowing into the legs, for example. Mm-hmm. Very commonly you'll see big swollen legs when someone has heart failure. And you know, that's one of the things my mother had swollen legs and ankles and feet, but we just thought it was because of her size. But what are some of the signs we can look out for and how do we we know that's a difference between someone because a lot of people that suffer heart failure are overweight, correct? Yes, but there's a difference between having uh, fat in your legs and mm-hmm. having fluid in your legs. And so whenever I see fluid in someone's legs, I immediately go on alert because that could be mm-hmm. kidney failure or heart failure. Mm-hmm. And one of the ways to tell the difference is if you push your finger into the skin on your leg, mm-hmm. right? If it's fat, you're not really going to see much of a mark there. But if it's fluid, when you push your finger in and let go, you will see an indent that remains. Uh. And that is a way to know that that's actually fluid in your legs and you need to go to a doctor. Oh, that's a great tip for a lot of people out there. So what can we do if we know someone who is living with heart failure? Is there any cure for it? Well, there's no medical cure for it. Mm -hmm. So right now, the medications we use really can only help with symptoms, but they don't prolong life. But what's really good to know is you can make a difference with your lifestyle. So Mm -hmm. there's been a lot of evidence out there for decades by plant-based doctors like Caldwell Esselstyn and Dean Mm -hmm. Ornish, who have reversed heart failure in their patients through diet and lifestyle. I've had great success with that in my practice, where if you eat a lot of veggies, you limit or eliminate the foods that cause those plaques, like the saturated fats, all the delicious stuff, the meat and the dairy and the (laughs) eggs and the butter, I know. But if you stop doing that and you eat a lot of veggies and you exercise, exercise Mm -hmm. makes your heart stronger, it makes you live longer. So if you Mm -hmm. do those things, you can eliminate or at least greatly reduce those symptoms. And you have some great tips in your books that we just showed here as well as ways to eat healthier, to improve your diet, to also avoid having heart failure in the first place, right? Absolutely. So I'm known for autoimmune (laughs) disease because I reversed my own lupus using diet Mm -hmm. 15 years ago. But the same nutrition that can help your immune system also helps all of your organs. It's not like different diets for different things. Mm. What your body uses to get stronger is the same in all areas. So, you know, I'm always talking about vegetables. You know, your your risk of heart disease is inversely proportional to how much veggies you eat. Mm. So the more veggies you eat, the healthier your heart will be as well. Okay. See, my mom used to always tell me, eat your veggies. Now I'm telling her, eat your veggies, yes. mom. And everyone out there that's listening, please try to take on a healthier eating diet so you can avoid some of these problems that people are dealing with. Thank you so much, Dr. Golden, You're for so joining welcome. us. Thank you for inviting me. I hope your mom's doing well. Thank you so much. Our prayers are with her.